We'd like to welcome you to a demonstration of our Secure Access Service Edge or SASE solution running on the Amazon Web Services Cloud. Before we get into the details of the demonstration, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Bennu Networks, our platform. The solutions we offer in this significance to carrier service providers are being able to run our solutions on the AWS Cloud anywhere in their global footprint. So now briefly, we've been in business for over 12 years, established in 2010. We're a global company with customers on five continents and our headquarters is in Boston, Massachusetts. We're an industry leader in the development and delivery of software defined edge solutions, which is the delivery of network functionality at the edge of the network through software with our primary customer being carrier service providers. We have a very strong engineering organization. We take technology and innovation very seriously. And that organization represents about 80% of our employees. What you'll be seeing today is our software defined edge platform running on the AWS cloud. And it can through software deliver critical network functions that carriers require to deliver services. And you'll be seeing SASE today but it can deliver other functionality and services as well, including operating as a 5G access gateway function, a BNG and provider edge router, a TWAG or wireless access gateway. And it can also deliver carrier grade NAT services all in cloud native mode. We recently announced a relationship with AWS. We've worked with them to deliver cloud native networks for service providers. Now, what this means is that, for example, our broadband network gateway and our SASE solution can run in cloud native mode anywhere in the AWS global footprint. This is the first time that the public cloud's been used to deliver wireline broadband and security services. And what this means to CSPs is that they can reach out beyond their current physical network, beyond their current physical footprint, and deliver services anywhere in the globe that AWS has a presence. This model will allow them to deliver services faster, enter new markets quicker, and expand into new geographies without having to build out network infrastructure. We're doing today's demonstration in conjunction with one of our existing customers, Liberty Latin America. They're a leading operator in Latin America and the Caribbean with over $4 billion in revenue, a very large network connecting over 40 markets and a full set of services. Today, Liberty Latin America delivers our SASE solution across 26 countries to teleworkers who are employees of several of their key enterprise customers. The service today is delivered out of our SASE gateways, which are shown here, and they're currently reside at various locations in LLA's network. The scenario that we're going to be demonstrating today, however, is where one of Liberty Latin America's customers, a bank in Panama, needs that teleworker SASE solution delivered to employees in other parts of the globe, for instance, the United States, but in locations where Liberty Latin America does not have a physical footprint or a physical network. We're gonna show you the architecture of our solution running on AWS, delivering the SASE teleworker solution. We're gonna take you through the management platform, our SASE administration will show you how easy it is to add new accounts, new users, new locations how easy it is to apply security and network policies and to look at statistics, performance and reports of the companies and employees served by this SASE teleworker solution. Now that's all made possible because of our solution running in cloud native mode on AWS. And this is the reference architecture of that solution and the one used in the demonstration. And there are a couple of important things to note. One is that you'll see our SASE gateway is running in the AWS local zone in Northern Virginia while our SASE controller is running out of the different location, the AWS region in Ohio. That's because we support the CUPS architecture or the separation of the control plane from the user plane. And this disaggregated model carries with a lot of benefits. One is that our SASE gateway or user plane can be placed anywhere in the network to deliver the best performance for the service it's offering. And multiple user planes can be placed in the network in different AWS local zones throughout the country or even throughout the globe. Those user planes can be scaled up and down as needed to deliver the service required in the SASE controller, which is shown here in Ohio, can also be scaled up and down independently. And in a different location, such as Ohio, the carrier may choose to do that, let's say, for example, for a more centralized management model. And one of the important things also is that running in this mode is extremely important because, in fact, it carries with it 
the value of running on the AWS infrastructure, including high availability connectivity and elastic scalability anywhere in the global footprint. So today's demonstration, again, is a customer of Liberty Latin America. You can see it on the left side of the diagram, a bank in Panama who has employees in the United States and they need those employees to be delivered the SASE teleworker solution. So we've spun up a user plane in the Northern Virginia AWS local zone and the control plane in Ohio. And we'll take you through the demonstration of the Bender Network SASE solution running on AWS in this network architecture out of these actual locations. Before we get into the details, let me just give you an overview of our management model. We provide a multi-layer governance model, which allows the carrier to maintain a super admin role while giving channel partners, channel partner enterprise customers, and even end users their own appropriate level of control. So for example, a carrier might choose to sell the SASE service direct, or they may also choose to sell it through managed service providers and channel partners. Now that managed service provider is gonna to wanna to see and manage their enterprise customers. And in turn, those enterprise customers or small to medium business IT managers are gonna to wanna to be able to manage their own company security needs and policies. Our platform comes with that capability built in. It's very easy to use, and we're gonna be showing you some of the power of that in today's demonstration. So this is a snapshot of some of the key functions that the different administrators can do and some of the things that they can manage. We'll take you through the details of this in just a minute, including how policies can be set at the device level and how organizations, employees, teleworkers, and even IoT devices can be put into their own user groups so that policies common to their needs can be easily applied and managed. And you'll see at the bottom of this picture, the guest net manager, a captive portal. Now there may be an MSP that sells, for example, heavily into the hospitality vertical, and those businesses are gonna wanna give Wi-Fi access to guests, but they're also gonna to wanna to tighten up the level of control, security and access that that guest can use. It's very easy to do in this platform as well. So you can see it's pre-built, very easy to launch, very easy to set up, and we'll be taking you through some of this functionality today as part of today's demonstration. As part of our SASE solution, I am going to demonstrate how a managed service provider can manage its enterprise customer's account, their services offering, and their user experience. Then later as a second part of this demo, I will show you the enterprise IT manager dashboard where IT admin can support all enterprise employees working from home or working from one of the office sites. I am logging in as MSP admin here. On dashboard, it provides overview of the network within the purview of the MSP admin. On the left top shows 68 total network configured among all the enterprise users. Uh, we have uh, 52 devices on online and total three enterprise accounts that are being managed currently. And on the bottom left, you see the total number of bandwidth upstream and downstream used by all the devices in the network and you can show it on the different uh, time intervals and on the right hand side to the chart is showing the total number of devices attached and any time in the given day now let's go over the account to show how account management is simplified as we saw before we had three accounts and the one we're going deeper dive into is the panama bank so the detail page here for Panama Bank is showing the, their basic account information, which is being pulled in from the existing OSS BSS through an API integration. And you can do some operations like suspending an account access or, or even also disabling internet access from this uh, screen. Now going over the user groups, this is the list of different service groups, which includes security that is needed to run this enterprise network operations. These user groups uh, are logical binding of network policy and security policy. In this example, all the remote workers are going through Venue security, while HQ network service profiles are mapped to Fortinet VM that is running in AWS. So as an MSP, you can build a marketplace of security vendors as each enterprise security needs and wants can be different. 
in the trial we are we have Fortinet and Bennu security but uh, we can easily stitch in Palo Alto security which could be another VM running in AWS uh, within the service provider VPC or the enterprise VPC next up is the site menu uh, which is which are the remote workers and the enterprise sites uh, as an MSP, you can bulk add them as part of the onboarding process uh, from the enterprise. Uh, you can provide up to 500 CPEs um, uh, or you could do a manually add of individual site uh, on need basis. Uh, all you need to provide is uh, fill up a form here. I'm, I'm putting in site ID, which happened to be the MAC address of the site and providing a site name so that I can uniquely identify uh, this site from name as well. Uh, and this uh, remote worker who's in Burlington, Massachusetts belongs to uh, sales. So I'm just putting one user group uh, for sales here and uh, providing uh, up, let's see, up link and bandwidth uh, for that specific site is going to be bandwidth for a site is going to be. And a uh, few other things like addresses is added as well so that uh, we know where, where the location of the site is and it's going to show up on the enterprise mapping uh, and this is all we had to do to for a day zero configuration of that site now what that mean is when the cp is turned on the it will connect back to the sassy gateway that's running in the aws and the all the traffic and the policies will get applied uh, at that point this pretty much covers the onboarding process of a site or a, or a remote worker. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we, this is a MSP admin where each MSP admin has its own branding. Uh, they can add their own logos and also can have their own uh, portal themes. Here we have uh, showing a blue and blue theme, the yellow theme, red and dark purple theme. Or as an MSP admin, you could choose your own color schemes and on the right, it will show you how it looks. This pretty much covers the MSP side of the demo. Next up, uh, I'm going to be logging in as an enterprise admin. As an MSP admin, you can straight away go, go to the enterprise login and see the dashboard. As we saw it, the MSP has branded it to be the red and dark purple along with the Liberty Latin America's logos. So you see them here. And the dashboard provides a quick overview of uh, how the systems and the, all the systems are behaving. Uh, here we see 30 sites that are online and two of them are offline. Uh, and we have 38 devices that are connecting right now. And at some point in time, there were 104 devices that were attached and there's no threats. If there was any malware phishing, any kind of uh, threats were showing up, they would be, they would show up here as well. And uh, similar to the, the charts that we had on the MSP, we have charts uh, here as well. That, uh, but the new charts are on the bottom where you talk about the top web categories, like what employees are doing, what different top five sites are they going to, what different type of categories they're doing. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, any kind of a threats or uh, offline uh, sites will show up in the bottom charts. As we added sites from the MSP, here as an enterprise uh, admin, you can go see where the sites are located uh, and uh, can go more detailed of the each site uh, by just uh, finding with from few keywords. Uh, I'm trying to find all the employees on the finance side and looking at the details about that specific site with Panama AWS Finance. And I can see total bandwidth being used uh, for that site. Uh, also provides uh, like how long the, the site has been up, how many devices have been used. Uh, it has, uh, you can turn on and off the internet uh, from here as well for that site, along with the, some of the firewalls and uh, security parameters that you could set uh, on, the, on the site as well. And on the bottom here, it's showing a more detailed view of the devices and how the device and uh, bandwidth is being uh, managed. You will see there's only one MacBook is uh, online right now and the Windows PC is offline. 
We do have a built-in fingerprinting that would uh, detect the device type and uh, show it the right icons. Uh, and uh, here you can turn off the internet access along with setting up the upstream and downstream bandwidth of individual devices. So the policies that we have are, can be set at the device level. What that means is that as an IT manager, you have full visibility and control of all sites and devices which makes it tremendously easy to understand the user experience and debug the problem. Also, we do have a reset button in the case site needs to be reset for some reason. Now, as an MSP admin, we had talked about user groups and we had six user groups set. And uh, let's take a look at the finance user group. What is providing you is, is total bandwidth used by all the finance uh, member team members uh, total device attached rate for the for the team members what type of categories websites categories they are going to uh, also it provides you how many what the total which devices are doing the lot more usage uh, and also given a more understanding of what the peak hours and how the active uh, devices are or any kind of uh, websites being blocked because of malicious activities and also you can download a report uh, for the finance specific uh, user groups. Now, what that means is from the policy point of views you, that you can apply a policy for all the users within the same user groups. For example, if I turn off internet access here, it will turn off internet access for all the users in all the sites. And if I change any of the access uh, availability, schedule access here, it will again affects all the sites that uh, belongs to the same user group. Now, since each user group is uh, as a layer two connectivity, the we do offer a full suite of LAN settings uh, like DHCP scope, DHCP net mask, least LANs, and max number of devices that could be connected from the user group. So as an IT manager, you have uh, uh, the great granularity of the devices level, the layer two level, what the policies should be. Also, you can set a bandwidth of any new device coming on board, what's the bandwidth should be set for that new device, along with the MAC bindings. Uh, in the case, you want a specific IP address to be assigned to certain devices. And again, it does not matter what site it belongs to. It's all part of the user groups uh, from all different sites. And as you see all the devices, we saw John's uh, MacBook uh, in the prior screens. So it's just, that uh, belongs to the finance user groups. As part of the network connectivity, you can set IPsec tunnel back to the headquarters or to a cloud data center for all the devices that belong to this specific user group. We do offer primary and backup tunnels uh, for redundancy use case, which you will configure it here. Also, not all traffic needs to go through these tunnels. You can specify certain routes that will go through the IPsec tunnel and the rest will go back to the internet. And as part of the other layer three and layer two feature sets, we do offer port forwarding for both IPv6 and IPv4. And uh, recording security, this user group is assigned with Venu integrated security, which means IT manager can set the security parameters here. Uh, sites can be blocked uh, based on the reputation and category by simply clicking on the custom settings. Also, MSP has an option to pre-select and create certain categories that IT manager can choose for specific user groups as well. This will help take some of the security burden out of the IT manager and provide much simpler provisioning interface to the end customer. Apart from categories, URL filtering can also be done on the user group shown here. Now I want to take you to another user group, which is the HQ guest. Now it's a special user group, which has device onboarding that can be done using the landing pages. And the landing pages portal is also part of the solution. As shown here, we can customize the landing pages. So you could have disclaimer that's set by the IT manager. You could have a pass, uh, password settings, it could be a Facebook check-in or operator like uh, disclaimer. 
and it can be customized to add any text color changes the button changes so that it becomes very personalized for the uh, for the users coming in and onboarding on the guest Wi-Fi we talked about reports I want to I preloaded this report uh, previously and I'm just showing you here like how it looks like so a report shows again the same charts that uh, we show for each user group but apart from that it does also includes the sites blocked in case these are needed uh, as a weekly report it can be generated for each uh, user group and each site with that we conclude our demo as you saw Beno has a unique solution for service provider to create a SASE offering with security and service marketplace for their end customers. This can be done by leveraging the network that you have already built. Our partnership with AWS brings another level of operation simplicity along with the global footprint, which will allow you to offer the same service globally without requiring any network offering in the region. With that, thank you very much.